North Korea has fired an intercontinental ballistic missile, which Japan said had the range to hit U.S. mainland. Now, this comes just today after North Korea launched a smaller missile and warned of fiercer military responses to the U.S. for boosting its security presence in the region. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has said that the missile is believed to have fallen into the country's exclusive economic zone. Kishida called the launch absolutely unacceptable. There are no reports of damage to ships or aircraft so far. Talking to the press in Bangkok, Kishida said Japan, the US and South Korea must coordinate closely to work towards complete denuclearization of North Korea. The Japanese officials later said the missile had fall at sufficient range to reach US mainland. え、in response to the missile launch, the leader of the United States and its allies held an emergency meeting in Bangkok on the sidelines of the ongoing APEC summit. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, along with the Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, along with leaders from South Korea and New Zealand, attended the emergency meeting. The leaders condemned the latest missile test conducted by North Korea. This conduct by North Korea most recently is a brazen violation of multiple U.N. security resolutions. It destabilizes security in the region and unnecessarily raises tensions. We strongly condemn these actions, and we again call for North Korea to stop further unlawful, destabilizing acts. On behalf of the United States, I reaffirm our ironclad commitment to our Indo-Pacific alliances. Together, the countries represented here will continue to urge North Korea to commit to serious and sustained diplomacy. Meanwhile, Russia stepped into the row, taking North Korea's side. The Russian deputy foreign minister said that the U.S. was testing the patience of North Korea. He claimed that while Moscow prefers a diplomatic approach towards the Korean Peninsula, the U.S. and its allies in the region prefer a different path. Earlier in the day, the White House released a statement strongly condemning North Korea for its test of a long-range ballistic missile. The statement called the launch a brazen violation of multiple UN Security Council resolutions, adding that it needlessly raises tensions and risks, destabilizing the security situation in the region. The Australian Prime Minister Albanese also called out North Korea, saying that it is a rogue state and that it needs to stop its aggression. The Japanese Defense Minister said the latest missile was capable of flying as far as 15,000 kilometers. Officials, meanwhile, said the missile flew to an altitude of about 6,000 kilometers with a range of 1,000 kilometers before landing in the sea roughly 200 kilometers west of Oshima Island in Hokkaido. ICBM級弾道ミサイルは 今回の飛翔軌道に基づいて計算すると弾頭重量等によっては1万5000キロを超える射程となり、なりうると見られ、その場合、米国本土が射程に含まれることになります。and for more on this, uh, with us on the broadcast this minute is Bill Gallo, Voice of America correspondent from Seoul. Thanks very much for being here, Bill. Uh, this ICBM launched by North Korea, what is the latest that we know at this point? And uh, the timing of this launch uh, is also significant. Yeah, so North Korea has obviously tested a lot of missiles lately this year, over 70 missiles. However, it's important to note 
that really only a handful of those have been ICBMs, and including this latest launch. South Korean officials, according to some preliminary reports here in South Korea, think this missile may have been the Hwasong-17, which is the biggest missile that North Korea has. Of course, as you mentioned, uh, this is a missile that can range the United States. Japanese officials confirmed that. Many analysts and missile, uh, missile kind of nerds, people who study this, call it the monster missile. It's because it is the largest missile in, in North Korea's arsenal and quite foreboding in many ways. Uh, it has many missiles that can actually strike the United States. However, um, it, it's testing those missiles more frequently right now. It's upset North Korea, of course, about uh, increased U.S.-South Korea military exercises, but really it also just needs to test these missiles to make sure that they work, and I think that's probably a big motivation why they tested the missile today. Right. Uh, let's just take a step back and also talk about uh, how this is a fresh escalation of these tensions in the Korean Peninsula, Bill. Uh, coming at a time when uh, Pyongyang is trying to send out a message uh, to the U.S., to South Korea, as well as Japan. Uh, it has been irked by those joint drills as well. Uh, so if we were to break down for our viewers the reason why Pyongyang uh, is uh, trying to send out this message, uh, if you can just elaborate on that. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, the most immediate reason, the reason, the justification that North Korea gives is these joint U.S.-South Korea drills. However, these drills are very routine and they happen uh, in, in proportion to how much North Korea tests missiles. So while that is the immediate justification, there are obviously bigger issues at play here. Many analysts think that North Korea is ramping up its missile tests in order to get attention. Now, not purely to get attention, but in order to be able to increase its leverage and sort of to force the United States back to the bargaining table, but not just the bargaining table, to force them to bargain on their own terms. North Korea really wants to be seen as a nuclear weapons state. The U.S. will not offer it that. And I think North Korea is insistent in continuing to launch missiles and saying, hey, we're going to launch missiles. You'll have to acknowledge it sooner or later. Right, Bill, a quick uh, remark also on uh, how this comes at a time when the Spanish Prime Minister and some hundred business leaders from South Korea and Spain are gathered uh, in Seoul. Uh, so this test coming at a time like this, what's the reaction as of now? Yeah, you know, South Korea's conservative president, of course, was uh, highly condemnatory of this launch. Uh, really, just hours after the launch, the U.S. and South Korea uh, announced that they held some joint air drills involving the F-35 advanced fighter jet. They dropped some laser-guided bombs in, short, in sort of a show of force. Uh, but I think maybe the more interesting thing timing-wise was that this launch came as uh, leaders of APEC met in Bangkok, as your previous reporting had noted. This really sort of provided an opportunity for the United States to get its allies together immediately and issue very strong and extended condemnations of this launch. That's not something we see every time, and it was notable that it happened this time. All right, we're leaving you there for the moment, Bill. Thanks very much uh, for joining us with those inputs. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.